హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి అని ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్స్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ టుడే మోడ్యూల్ ఫిఫ్టీ నైన్ ఎ న్యూ టాపిక్ క్లాసిఫికేషన్ ఆఫ్ వన్ డైమెన్షనల్ మ్యానిఫోల్డ్స్ ఇన్ ఎవ్రీ క్లాసిఫికేషన్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ వీ మస్ట్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ have plenty of examples of okay of whatever you are looking for the likely representations of various uh, objects which we want to classify suppose you want to classify a certain number of trees okay so first of all you should have a number of trees various number of trees and then you can say okay these are of this type that is of this type and so on that is the kind of thing you are to right so which are likely to represent all possible types we don't know yet so we think that no we this may be just exhaustive exhaustive types okay only after that we can make a probable list of representatives which are mutually of different type okay the final step is to draw a conclusion to, is to what is to show that every object that we wanted to classify belongs to precisely one of the types mentioned in the list while doing that often what happens is somebody else or you yourself we find out another new object which was not listed in at all and which does not follow fall in any of these types so you have to add that one to the list that's all so this way classification keeps going on when we were children the classification in you know, a biological classification of species was not yet over by now by by several uh, years now uh, uh, people say it is over now okay so it's like that long long back mendel beef started classifying elements so he predicted that this is what all the elements will be so some elements were not even found but he predicted them and so on right so it is like that classification or scientific classification involves these two these two steps fundamental steps here in order to classify all manifolds clearly it suffices to consider only connected ones for any manifold is locally connected because they are locally euclidean and hence its connected components are both open as well as closed therefore every manifold can be written as disjoint union of its connected components even as a topological space you see when you have disjoint union of topological spaces that is not the same thing as taking a topological space and writing it as disjoint union of closed sets okay if it is closed sets as well as open sets then it will be disjoint union as a man as a topological space also okay so the, all this justification you can only look at connected manifolds okay so what are now now we want to classify one dimension manifolds right so what are the examples of connected one dimension manifold that you have so far can you think of more of them so this is the first step you have to do right so first of all we look at inside r itself okay observe that any two closed intervals okay are homeomorphic you know non degenerate single point you may also you may take a closed interval but take at least two points then they are all homeomorphic to each other if it is single point single points themselves are homeomorphic to each other no problem so why are what are there we have seen already why are linear maps i mean affine linear maps 
this homeomorphism can then be used to get homeomorphism between any two bounded open intervals as well or between any two bounded half open intervals okay so suppose 0 1 to a b i have got then i can delete a and uh, 0 i will get open 0 to 1 close to open a to 1 to b close and so on right that is what we have done so we have we know that all open intervals are homeomorphic to each other half open intervals themselves will be homeomorphic to each other closed intervals are themselves homeomorphic to each other so there are three of them if you want to mention finally what we have if you look at x going to tan x or some other uh, uh, homeomorphism many other i am giving you one example this defines a homeomorphism of open interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 to the whole of r right and if you restrict it to 0 to pi by 2 it will give you a homeomorphism from closed interval 0 to infinity so these full things unbounded things are also taken care under this open intervals half open intervals half closed intervals and so on so thus as far as subsets of r are concerned we do not have too many of them what are they open intervals half open intervals or closed intervals so there are only three classes when i say list whatever i mention here they are themselves homeomorphic to each other so if you take one half interval 0 to half 0 to 1 1 open then there is no need to take you know 0 open and 1 close because this they are already homeomorphic to each other okay as soon as we go to subspaces of r2 we get some other types it seems like circles ellipses parabola circles were definitely not there inside r right ellipses were not there parabolas are they different many more actually what are called as smooth curves you can talk about the smooth and non-smooth is a something a completely different uh, game altogether but we can take simultaneously you can study both of them also okay boundaries of a convex polygon like a triangle or a square or a rectangle or a pentagon you look at the boundary they are also one dimension manifolds if we have one to one parameterization of any of these curves then clearly they will be homeomorphic to an interval or a circle and so on okay first of all a smooth curve open interval you know neighborhoods will be homeomorphic to interval that's why they are manifolds this is the case with parabola a parabola can be parameterized by r completely in a one to one fashion what is that say for y square y equal to x square y square equal to x square whatever x comma x square that is the graph of that function itself will give you the parameterization right but if you look at hyperbola hyperbola is not connected so you have to take only one lap of hyperbola then again you can parameterize it so even if you go to r2 except the circles and ellipses you do not get new things okay circles ellipses boundary of a triangle and so on what are they they are themselves homeomorphic to each other okay so this is what i want to tell you one can also easily see that any two circles are homeomorphic to each other first of all indeed you place a small circle inside an ellipse and then project it project the circle over to the ellipse you know radial projection you know from the center so that will be you homeomorphism of circle with the ellipse okay you can write down formulas also but if you take a pentagon or a, you know any hexagon and so on arbitrary any convex polygon writing down a formula is little more difficult but you know geometrically you can easily see 
that all of them are homeomorphic to a circle and any two circles themselves are homeomorphic to each other okay if you try at least write down a formula uh, from a circle uh, from a triangle to a circle okay for each time what triangle is it an equilateral triangle where are the vertices all this you have to bother about all right so do we get any other types of one dimensional manifold if we go to r3 r4 and so on other higher dimensions you have to probe right why i am going in sir only euclidean spaces because our earlier theorem that any manifold is a closed subset of some r2 n plus 1 therefore when i are hunting for one dimensional manifolds you don't have to worry beyond r3 all one dimensional manifolds copies of them will be there inside r3 right but in r3 there may be weird kind of embeddings of the circle <laughs> the very fact that they are embeddings of circle they are homeomorphic to circle are there different ones that is the point the embeddings may be very funny but they are all homeomorphic to circle so we are not bothered about weird embeddings and so on okay so are there any other one dimension manifold the answer is no so that is the gist of whatever is going to come now okay maybe today and another one tomorrow so two more lectures we may have to take okay so it is the this is the theorem final theorem x be any connected one dimension manifold which just means remember it's hausdorff and second countable abstract okay so topological manifold i have put the smooth in the bracket because the statement is true for smooth case also okay correspondingly instead of homeomorphism you will have diffeomorphism the final conclusions are the surprisingly they are the same here but for our purpose we will ignore the smooth part and diffeomorphism part we will be only proving the topological aspect okay so what is the statement take a connected one dimension manifold with or without boundary specifically i have mentioned the boundary case also here then x is homeomorphic to one of the following 1 2 3 4 oh what are they open interval half open interval closed interval or the circle look at this case the first one and the last one are manifolds that means manifolds without boundary the second one and third one are manifolds with boundary they are all connected of course otherwise i won't list them here this and this one these are non compact so these two are compact so if you want only compact one only these two you will get right if you want non compact ones only these two you will get so don't put compactness you have all the four of them that's all now first thing what i will do is granting granting that we know the uh, classification for uh, manifolds without boundary namely bound of x is empty okay what are the two then i will get only this one and this one first one and last one i will complete the classification for all of them that means when you allow boundary you will have two more that's what i will i will show you today okay granting this namely the classification theorem for when the boundary is empty okay we will prove the complete complete statement namely boundary of x non empty also we will consider and complete the statement when boundary of x is non empty i have to show that either it is this half open interval or it's a closed interval 
right this one has no boundary this one has no boundary so that we assume that we know already as soon as boundary less it must be either open interval or the the circle all right okay so immediately it follows that start with a manifold with boundary x non empty interior of x we know is a boundary less manifold it must be either the open interval or the all a circle but i have assumed a, a boundary fx is non empty so it cannot be circle because if it is circle it's already closed okay so you can't have another extra boundary point boundary point must be the, uh, in the closure of this one so so interior of x must be homeomorphic to an open interval okay the question is now how many boundary points can you put here that's all i want to say that you can put a boundary point around this end and uh, end namely at zero you can put a boundary point here one of them or both of them and that's it if you put only one of them you will get this one or its carbon copy namely zero open and one close that is homeomorphic this one so that is, that is the same case if you put both of them you get this one so these are the only two distinct cases so that is what we have to prove so in other words i want to show that the boundary of 0 1 okay 0 1 is sitting inside in this interior of x okay x is a manifold with boundary and that boundary is non empty will consist of one point two point that's it and in those cases it must be precisely this so this is what we have to show all right so i repeat this one interior of x is omr should be 0 1 and hence without loss of generality we may assume 0 1 itself is the interior by taking the homeomorphism copy of this one by the very definition if x is in the boundary there is a homeomorphism psi from 0 epsilon to u this is the remember this is an open subset in the half h space h1 right zero infinity i can assume but i can just take zero epsilon also to u where u is an open subset of x so this is homeomorphism such that the zero goes to x so this is a parameterization it's inverse of a coordinate chart around the point x clearly if you look at psi of open interval zero epsilon that is homeomorphic to u minus x being a connected open subset of 0 1 contained inside x okay is a b for some 0 less than a less than b less than because we know all the connected subsets of an open interval okay when you throw away one point what you have what is u minus x is homeomorphic to 0 epsilon okay also the psi x is in its closure right if we have chosen a and b between 0 and 1 then it follows that psi x x is a well chosen point in the interior we are we are uh, in the boundary uh, we are looking at psi x and a or psi x and b See, psi x does not hit a a is no open interval is, is there only a is not in the image of psi x psi x comma a this is a order is just two two element set similarly psi x or b you take will be a pair of distinct points of x which violate the hausdorffness condition because every neighborhood of this a See, a is now a point, you know, inside our interior of x. Okay, every neighborhood of a and every neighborhood of psi x, they will intersect each other. Some a plus epsilon, some part will come on this side. On the other side, I don't know. Okay, a plus something because a to b is is uh, this uh, psi of 
uh, zero epsilon right so so that's what uh, happens this means that hausdorffness is violated hausdorffness is violated so this a and b cannot be strictly between 0 and 1 okay so they must be a must be 0 or b must be 1 okay so which implies that 0 1 contained inside x because i started with 0 1 itself is contained inside x i i didn't want to distinguish between the homeomorphism under this homeomorphism you take this 0 1 this just uh, facilitates this to think of this points a and b are also inside x as well or it may be the one is in the uh, neighborhood so 0 1 is inside x so i i'll assume one of them by symmetry i could have changed the psi so 0 1 is inside x okay with the zero being one of the boundary points the x that is i started with okay for each point i have got something like this one single point i have completed i have no contradiction but it has to be like this of course x may be equal to 0 1 then the case is over there is no more to bother about this is allowed then we are done. So, consider the case when x minus 0 1 is non empty. Okay, there is some more point. Let y be another boundary point of x. Arguing exactly as before, it now implies that y has to be equal to 1 now. Because it cannot be equal to again another uh, 0. Then, then the 0 and this y will be violating the Hausdorffness. It can't be in the other in the other end. So it has to be this end, and then this y and 1 should be the same unless if they are not same, then the Hausdorffness condition will be violated. So they must be the same. That means now I have got 0, 1 is contained inside x. Okay. Now 0 1 is compact. So it's closed in X. It follows that there cannot hey, cannot be any may any uh, you know more boundary points of X at all. Thus we have completed X equal to zero one. Okay, the moment zero one, see it's a closed subset. It's automatically open subset of the bound is the entire X because the boundary points are there. Okay this 0 comma o 0 close comma 1 open this is an open subset inside x okay so it's both open and closed and x is connected so it is the whole space so you are saying something sir i had a question here so we had a homeomorphism from open interval 0 1 to x hmm. to the interior of x Mm. So the uh, topology on the interior of X uh, was uh, which was uh, on open interval zero one. Yeah. Now when you took a boundary point mm. and uh, when we saw that uh, it can be zero, uh, so the first line says of course as X can be equal to close interval zero one. Mm. So then we are done. Mm. So we have only know that zero is the boundary point, mm. but. Uh, Will the topology on this 0 1 is also same as which comes from the surface? That is precisely what we are doing here now. We are we are not assuming we are not assuming the rest of the real number system has anything to do with this. This 0, this 1 is a copy of the open interval 0 1 inside x. That is subspace of this one, open interval. This we started with that. Okay, this 0 1 using the homeomorphism i have identified this is notation here now this zero is a point of this one okay this zero one is a carbon copy of open interval so there is an order x has no order okay that order is being used here okay so suppose now it were something like 
sub a comma b after removing this see see there is a there is a uh, map from zero, zero close to this one okay you don't know where is this zero is going this zero is going where it's going to x you know, x is not a point of the interior okay it x is inside this open subset you know x minus this open subset the complement of that okay so i am showing that if if you have this open interval sitting here okay b u minus x you throw with this u is the whole thing u minus x means what i am throwing away x okay so where does it come from if it is like this there will be a problem okay so what is in in other words what i am saying you can see a take a sequence of points okay converging to this zero okay <laughs> converging to the zero means what that point is not there in x at all that is why i cannot do, do that converging to zero and so on so if it converges to some other point inside this interval say a or b on the other side then you have a problem that's what you have to see see this is similar to our earlier problem wherein compactification of open interval 0 1 can you have one point compactification two point compactification three point compactification and so on the one point compactification of 0 1 is the circle open interval okay the two point compactification is the closed interval 0 1 can you have a three point compactification four point compactification so this was a question i think we are left it to you as an exercise maybe by now you have solved it i will tell you the answer now okay what is the answer if you don't put the word hausdorffness then it is possible if you put the covered hausdorffness the same argument for argument here or you can do it separately without many manifolds at all now just hausdorffness okay you cannot put a third point at all over remember a compactification means what of the original space x the, this x must be dense inside the larger space x bar right just use that use the property that x bar is hausdorff you cannot have three extra points from 0 1 open two points fine one point fine okay so that is the answer just use hausdorff so that's what i have done here but here i have used even stronger property so it's easier here namely that the whole space i am not assuming that it is compactification i am just assuming it is manifold with boundary manifold one dimension manifold with boundary okay since it is a boundary i already have the namely interior of x closure is the whole of x all the time using is that okay so what we have done is we have reduced the proof of the original theorem to the case when boundary of x is empty that means it is a manifold in our original definition with which we shall proceed now okay so let me do a little bit of it starting with a countable open cover u for x consisting of charges we need to understand how any two members u i u j of u intersect each other then only we will be able to assemble these you know various open intervals and produce a the new uh, objects how they they look like of course they may not intersect each other that's well and good no problem okay the moment If all of them don't intersect each other at all then it will be disconnected okay so some of them 
have to intersect in some other way because whole thing is connected. Assume that they intersect, just two of them at a time. Don't jump to the uh, whole thing. Uh, one we know already, it is homeomorphic to an open interval. The other one is also homeomorphic to open interval. We want to say how they intersect. They are not subspace of R now. You see, if they are inside R, there is nothing to prove. All right. Each copy is hanging somewhere. I don't want to use even in R2, R3 or anything. We can use the picture inside R3 because we have another theorem that whole thing is inside R3. So if you want, you can draw pictures, no problem. Beyond that, you can't do anything. Okay. So what we have to understand first is how two open subsets ui uj which are coordinate neighborhoods namely they are homeomorphic to open interval how they intersect how they intersect means what nobody has told you so you have to understand all possible all possible uh, ways of them they, they may intersect so that is the precisely the meaning of you know classification here okay so what we will do is Assuming that they intersect, uh, we shall first take two cases which we wish to happen and examine what best we can do in those cases. Nice cases, that's what you may say. But then finally we should say that no bad cases occur. So that is the whole idea. Okay, so today we shall see these nice cases and then later on we shall do the other cases. So start with a manifold X, one dimension manifold. U1 and U2 are any two non-empty open subsets in X. Neither of them contained in the other. This is an obvious thing that you, if one is contained in the other, there is nothing. You can take the bigger one that is open interval. So you can go ahead to the third one, right? So don't get into that kind of cases. Take the case wherein U1 and U2 are proper you know they don't they are not contained in the one uh, one contained the other they intersect also and choose open interval say i b i and homeomorphisms from psi i to u i this Romeo. suppose further that intersection is non-empty and connected this connectedness is the biggest hypothesis here, right? Non-empty we would like to have already. Anyway, next thing is look at the intersection under psi one inverse. It is some open interval. Why? Because psi one inverse is an open interval here, and this will be a connected subset. A connected open subset of an interval is again an interval. Okay, C1, B1. It is not the whole of A1, B1. Why? Because if it is the whole of A1, B1, that means U1 is contained inside U1 intersection, U2 is contained inside U2. That should not happen. So, this is, this is a proper open interval of A1, B1. Okay? Similarly, Psi2 inverse is a proper open subset of A2, B2. So what I have done, I have actually assumed that it is C1, B1. So the other end is fully taken. This part is has to be bigger than A1. Similarly, A2, C2 I have assumed. What does that mean? I have taken this end already. The other end B2, the B2 must be strictly bigger than C2. So that is what I have written. A1 less than C1 less than B1. A2 less than C2 less than B2. Okay, so the second assumption is very much stronger. I don't know why it should happen, but I would like this one to happen. Okay, the third condition is that is not very strong. Psi two inverse psi one from C one B one to A two C two, right? See C one B one. It goes into u intersection u2 and comes back to a2 c2 this must be 
order preserving look at this one if i am working inside x i don't have any order therefore i take two homeomorphisms here take the intersection take the on the intersection go to one and come back so this way i am getting a homeomorphism from interval to interval here i can talk about whether it is order preserving or order reversing this is very important but it can be and you know, either of them can be handled so i am assuming order preserving with all this the conclusion is very nice namely the union is homeomorphic to an open interval okay so what has happened is you have an open interval like this and another like this okay so what you have assumed that is they are intersecting like this the union will be again an open interval so this portion is there fully this portion is there it is not something like this open interval that open interval intersecting like that okay it is not of that nature okay let us go ahead see whether we can do something so this is we want to prove this union is homeomorphic to an interval very easy proof pick up any point d1 between c1 and b1 okay let d2 be the unique point inside a2 to c2 such that if psi1 is defined here right psi1 of d1 is equal to psi2 of d2 remember c1 to b1 c1 to b1 is intersection of this one so image of psi1 and image of psi2 they they are same here in intersection in u1 intersection u2 so if i take a point here d1 psi1 of that okay that will be in the, in the intersection it will be psi2 of some point where that point must be between a2 and c2 so that's all i have written then this is nothing very very special you pick up one point and choose the other point so that psi2 of d2 equal to psi1 of d1 now you take this number b1 prime as d1 plus b2 minus d2 okay so add to d1 you add this b2 minus d2 now i am going to define a a map p on the interval a1 to b1 prime okay a1 to b1 what i have i have psi1 but i don't want to take the whole of psi1 i will take psi1 of t up to d1 after that i use psi2 of t plus d2 minus d1 i can use psi2 but i have to shift the origin because at d1 okay these two this is common thing they should agree right psi1 and psi2 they should agree so psi1 of d1 exists prime to d2 so it should become d2 so if you take t times t plus d2 minus d1 and t equal to d1 what happens d1 and d1 cancel this is psi of d2 so psi1 of d1 here psi of d2 so they coincide so this map is well defined this function is well defined this part is continuous this part is continuous so phi t is a continuous function from this interval a1 to b1 prime inside x so everything goes inside x in phi actually u1 union u2 it doesn't go outside that okay so all the points of u1 union u2 are taken care if they are inside u1 then this psi1 t takes care of up to d1 beyond d1 psi2 will take care of all the points of this one are taken care of here okay so phi is subjective on to what u1 union u2 okay i should say that one here so subjective means u on u2 because of 3 what is this 3 that's the point is order preserving okay what happens is it is very easy 
this function becomes injective if points are two points are in this interval psi 1 will take care of that injective if they are in this interval psi 2 will take care of it the problem is suppose you have a point here and a point here then you have two different formula why they are not equal yes they are equal only when d1 is equal to this one the end, end point that's all for that you have to use that it is you know order preserving you just uh, write down uh, suppose t you know t is in this interval and uh, s is in this interval phi of t equal to phi of s which just means uh, psi 1 of t equal to psi 2 of s see that use that order preserving thing you can easily prove that this is uh, injective Okay. To see that phi inverse is injective or is continuous, this is this is this is a bijection, right? Now look at phi inverse. Phi inverse is injective. You have to observe that on psi one of a one d one, a one to d one here, we have what is the inverse of this one? It is psi one inverse. On psi two of d two to b two. Which is which happens to be in the in this interval d1 to b1 prime, okay? It is this phi inverse is it is not psi 2 inverse directly because there is a shift here. What is that shift? It is a translation by this t. T is what is this translation? It is x plus d1 minus d2. Okay, d2 minus d1 is added. The inverse will be x plus d1 minus d2. After taking the psi 2 inverse. You translate this one, then what you get is the inverse of this map phi. So both of them are continuous, and they agree at the point d one. Therefore, the entire phi inverse continuous. Over. So this proves that the union is homeomorphic to an interval. That was the statement here. next time we shall do another thing but we will wait for that another wishful thinking is is fulfilled <laughs> the wish is fulfilled so that will be the next uh, we will do that and after that we will go to the full classification thank you